in the soul seed movement, we hold as our first principle, life is precious. When I explain this to some people, they say it seems arbitrarily specific, and others say it seems to be based on circular logic, or that it's just self-evident. But I think it is both meaningful and important. I can see hidden deep, reaching for the sun. I can see visibly my journey has begun. I see I will find a way across the line. I see another world is growing towards a lie. I must join my tribe. Before you can understand the arguments for a principle, you have to understand what it means. So what do we mean when we say that life is precious? Well, let's break it down into words. Life. By life, we mean all living organisms. Animals, plants, funguses, protists, bacteria, archaea, viruses, prions, all of it. But the inclusion of prions in that list brings up a question of what is life? Prions are just proteins. The cause of mad cow disease is a prion. The cow's brain makes a protein that it uses as an enzyme. But to work as an enzyme, the protein has to be folded in a certain way, called PRPC. The problem is that there is another way to fold that particular protein, called PRPSC. Instead of performing the useful function that C-folded proteins do, SC-folded proteins grab hold of C-folded proteins and refold them into SC folded proteins. Eventually the SC folded proteins build up to the point where the brain cell ruptures and is killed. And so the prions spread through the brain. The SC folded protein is called a prion and it acts a bit like a living organism. Living organisms metabolize energy and materials from their environment and make more of themselves in the process. That pretty much defines living organism. So, prions do that. They take energy from the environment and they use it to change proteins that are not them into proteins that are them. The environment that they do this in is pretty specific, but they do it. So, are they alive? Well, in the soul seed movement we would say yes. But then we turn the question around into one that we think is more important. Are they as alive as a virus? And to that, we would answer no. And viruses, they aren't as alive as bacteria. And bacteria, they aren't as alive as protists. And protists aren't as alive as multicellular life. Animals. Plants. Hmm. Fungi, if there's any around. Oh, look back there on that dead birch. There's toadstools. So, what about going the other way? Prions are more alive than fire, which is more alive than rock. Galaxies are more alive than wisps of intergalactic gas. And stars are more alive than hydrogen and helium. So life isn't different from non-life as a matter of kind, but as a matter of degree. So when we say that life is precious, we mean that to the degree that something is alive, that is the degree to which it is precious. Is. The middle word of our principle is is. It's pretty easy to understand, isn't it? Let's, let's skip over that and go straight to the next word. Precious. What do we mean when we say that something is precious. Basically, we mean that it is highly valued. Gold, at $1,000 an ounce, is a precious metal. 
but you can't measure all values monetarily. Economists might think you can, but they are wrong. For one thing, how much is a dollar worth? Let's say I go to the store, pet store stay, and I buy a goldfish for a dollar. Was the goldfish worth a dollar? Obviously not. If it was worth a dollar to the store, then they wouldn't have sold it to me for a dollar. Stores are about making profits. They felt the goldfish was worth less than a dollar, and so they were very happy to give it to me for a whole dollar. But here's the thing. I left the store whistling and happy. Why? Because I knew that the goldfish was worth more than a dollar. That is why I gladly paid an entire dollar for it. You think I am going to throw out my money after all the effort I go through to earning it? Obviously not. So obviously value is relative. Something that is precious to me might be less precious to you, and vice versa. So how can we say that life is precious without specifying to whom it is precious and relative to what? Let's go back to prions. Really, the only thing that is precious to a prion is C-folded proteins and SC-folded proteins. C-folded proteins are precious for their potential to become SC-folded proteins. And SC-folded proteins are precious in and of themselves. But prions don't have any kind of thinking apparatus, so they can't really spend a lot of time thinking about the preciousness of C-folded or SC-folded proteins. Because prions are barely alive, prions don't have much of a concept of preciousness. Rocks, on the other hand, have no concept at all of preciousness. A, they have no thinking apparatus at all, and B, they don't really care about anything. Rocks don't do much to ensure that there's more rock in the world, and they don't really seem to care whether more rock comes into existence or whether rock of all kinds is entirely consumed in some long-term cataclysmic event or something. My dog, on the other hand, who's the one who's been pulling me off balance for this entire video, has a very clear concept of what is precious. Evidently, pulling on the leash really hard is precious to him. <laughs> and so is food. And tennis balls. He really loves tennis balls. And owners who throw tennis balls. And what he's most, I think, intensely happy about is owners who are themselves happy when he brings tennis balls back to them. So, the more alive something is, the more of a concept of preciousness it has. This kind of implies the corollary of our first principle. Things are precious to life. Not the other way around. Not life is precious. Not yet. I mean, tennis balls aren't very alive. Neither is gold. But my dog and humanity in general seem to think they are among the most precious things there are, respectively. But my dog's love of tennis balls is really strongly correlated with the presence of an owner who is happy when he brings the tennis ball to him. If I lose interest in tennis balls, then the dog loses interest in them pretty quickly too. Really, he is interested in the very alive activity of retrieving tennis balls. Living is what's precious, and the tennis ball is just something that he associates with the times that he feels most alive. Likewise, in the classic film Treasure of the Sierra Madre, there's a pretty clear demonstration of the value of gold. In the film, the character Dobbs is fleeing across a desert with a lot of gold. He runs low on water and is close to dying, but remains obsessed 
with the gold. As a member of the audience, it became pretty clear to me that water is worth more than gold because without life, gold is worthless and without water, there is no life. Gold is only worth something because it can be traded for the necessities of life and chances to feel more alive. Yes, a pretty piece of gold jewelry might make you feel more alive for a bit, but in the end it is being alive that is most precious. So the conclusion we come to is that all life, all living things, value being alive more than anything else. And it isn't exclusively their own lives that they value. Often they will value the lives of their children over anything else. When human beings, arguably some of the most alive creatures known, see a living forest like this, instinctively we value the life in the forest without it being for anything. We are enthralled by it, awed by it. It is valuable to us in and of itself. It doesn't have to be for anything. The purpose isn't the wood or the oxygen. The purpose is its beauty, but more importantly, its livingness. So we come to a statement that is so generally true that we can act like it is universally true. Life is precious. Life is the source of preciousness. Things are precious to the degree that they are precious to living things. And the thing that is most precious to living things is life itself. So there you have it. Life is precious.